Hey everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. It's Terry, your host. So, a um, lot of people been experiencing really severe weather all over the country. Some places it's flooding, some places it's powerful thunderstorms or, you know, derecho-like conditions. And I want to show you what was going on. Well, actually two nights ago, my trainee was driving and you know, she really has not had a lot of experience driving in pouring rain, let alone on US 54 in, you know, like Oklahoma and, and into Kansas, actually into Kansas um, at night. So she, I was actually in the bunk and she made the decision that she was not confident completely in what she was doing and the road conditions and her visibility so she did the right thing she didn't even ask me she just pulled into a truck's rest area and woke me up and said hey i don't feel like i can drive anymore right now with this pouring down rain and i was like yep that's a good decision and um you know it turned out we ended up eh, half an hour late to our 90 but it was a drop and hook no harm no foul she made the right decision. Well, then last night um, we were in Nebraska, and I started. You know, I she was driving again. I was awake and in the in the right hand seat, and I was watching the weather and getting weather alerts on my phone. And you know, whenever there's thunderstorms, there's going to be an increase in wind. And I started looking ahead to where we we're going because actually I had planned a fuel stop in Grand Island. Nebraska at the um, Bosselman uh, pilot franchise place there, you know, the place with the tank and the race cars and everything. So I, I told her, I said, oh, just get over to the, the Bosselman's, we'll fuel up. Well, I started looking at the weather on the Weather Channel app, I started looking at the radar, and then I pulled up Ventusky. And look at this picture that I took a screenshot from Ventusky. And right in the center is the really, really dark area. It looks like a bruise almost. And in that very tight little area, right in Grand Island, Nebraska, there were wind gusts almost 80 miles an hour. Like there's one that says 77, I think another one says 72. Now, that is wind gusts at, at 10 meters above ground level. However, I've put this chart out before where any wind gust 60 or more regardless of your load and by the way our load was only like 17,000 pounds 60 or above regardless of your weight it's you got to shut down so I was like I looked at that I was like hey there's a truck rest area up here let's let's go in there drop the landing gear and and wait this out so take a look at this picture that's um, and like I said, this is kind of an advertisement for checking Ventusky. Okay, so you can see that that, uh, and that one cell was like pretty scary. And that's why we stopped. So, so the other thing I wanted to talk about is, um, I've just been hearing like anecdotal stories, anecdotal evidence about people in TNT. And I wanted to, I know a lot of people have addressed this before. I've seen videos. Um, Lyle from No Hippie Trucking and Transportation talked about it. Other people, there's one guy, I can't remember his name. He did a great video. He was very uh, dispassionate, but very factual. And, um, but I, I, I kind of feel like it bears repeating and maybe I'll say something that'll resonate with somebody. But, but so here's the deal. You know, there's a guy named Mark who has a channel called Russian Trucking, like rushing as in I'm rushing from place to place. And um, he's been with a number of companies and I've been a subscriber of his for a while. And he did a video, it's probably been a couple of years now, where he talked about the best attribute for a trucker is patience. And at the time, you know, I was like, yeah, that is that is a thing you know it's it's uh, being patient goes a long ways in this business but I think that maybe I want to amend that idea in 
and say that for somebody in PSD, but especially in TNT, because TNT is really more about, it's not about learning to back up a truck as just an exercise. It's about learning to back up a truck into a loading dock or at a truck stop as part of the actual job. And, you know, and all the other tasks, driving down the highway isn't just an exercise in, you know, checking your mirrors and putting your blinker on. It's like we're going from A to B and that's our job. And so that attribute that I feel like really is, is undersold is adaptability. And, um, you know, and, and what I mean by that is this. You're going to get in situations, if you haven't been a trucker before, and let's face it, most people coming into this industry haven't been truckers. There's a few. I've met a few guys that have driven trucks before. Um, but it's going to be new to you. And so part of, part of being successful is being adaptable. And what does adaptability mean? Well, it means that, you know, situations that you haven't found yourself in before are still able to be handled whether it's mimicking what other truck drivers are doing in good ways whether it's following your trainer's instructions or whether it's just getting used to being out on the road for three weeks four weeks five weeks six weeks you know a trainer that goes out and says hey we're gonna stay out for four weeks that shouldn't be a shock to anybody Right? They shouldn't be like, oh, this is boring, or how come I have to drive, you know, 10 hours a day? You know, that's that's the job, right? That's what you you are seeking. That's that's the career that you've chosen to embark upon. So if you're if you haven't if you don't understand all of the worst parts about this job, then I guarantee you that all the best parts about this job are just gonna pass you by. And I don't care whether it's seeing cool things that you've never seen before. I don't care whether it's making good money. Because I've, I've had jobs where I made a butt ton of money, but I really wasn't happy in the job. And, you know, you're not going to have a blast every single day. You know, you're not going to do something that's new and adventurous every single day. Sometimes it's very monotonous. Um, there are certain places I just don't really like driving through very much, but I have to do it because it's the route that makes the most sense. Fortunately for me, I kind of have made, for lack of a better term, a parlor game out of being places. You know, like why is that called that? Like here's an example. I was in Laramie this morning. I stopped, actually I did my 30 in Laramie. We're at the Salt Lake Terminal now. I did my 30 in Laramie. And I was like, I cleaned my, I, you know, I did my under the hood checks that in detail. I cleaned my windows, did a couple other chores. Went in, got a drink, went to the bathroom. But then I was like, I had a little bit of time to kill and I'm like, why is Laramie called Laramie? Well, I know there's a Laramie River there was a Fort Laramie, there's, you know, Laramie Mountains, but why? Where'd that name come from? Well, it turns out it's, it was the name of a guy whose name probably was pronounced uh, La Remy. He was a French explorer, and he disappeared in the mountains in the 1820s, um, long before um, anybody, you know, like mostly English settlers came to Wyoming. But, you know, I didn't know who that town was named after. I mean, heck, there, that's a pretty, you know, it, it, there's only one explorer, I think, that has more things named after him in Wyoming, and that's Jim Bridger. But Laramie is even like, trucks are named, you know, like it's it shows up a lot, like it's a thing. It's like this epitome of the West. And it's just this French explorer who nobody knows what happened to him after about 1820, he just vanished in the mountains. Probably got eaten by a bear or something. But he's got a city named after him and a mountain and a fort and a river. Um, and I just find that interesting. Now, you know, not every day is going to be 
you know, scenic and good weather. I talked about <laughs> driving in crappy conditions. You know, this is a job. And it's actually a job that pays pretty well, especially considering the fact that you don't need a college degree. You don't even need to have graduated from high school. I mean, if you can, if you can basically read and write okay, and you know, you're not a drunkard or a dope fiend, you probably can get this job and keep it and make six figures at it within, you know, not a ton of time invested in it. So, but, but it's not all going to be rainbows and butterflies. You know, it's not all unicorns and glitter. You know, I mean, I know people look at me and they're like, man, this guy's really cool. He's a YouTube sensation, drives a blue freight liner. You know, like everybody loves the guy. Well, you know, that not everybody can have that. Um, and I got to admit that even though, you know, it's sometimes it's lonely at the top. I mean, sometimes I just got to go out and drive through the middle of the night. Nobody even recognizes me. By the way, um, I, I always appreciate people just saying hi. I really do. Um, that is one of the things I do enjoy about this channel. Um, obviously, I don't think I'm a big star, but um, <laughs> but I but I do appreciate people saying hi, um, and I like meeting people and um, learning about them. But you know, that's just one of those little things that I enjoy about my job. But there are things I don't enjoy about my job. Like the other day, I couldn't get it, find an empty trailer. I had to go scavenger hunting in Southern California for one. I didn't like that because I'm driving my truck around in a place where the fuel is like six bucks a gallon and with, the, with my discount. The point of all this is that if you're not adaptable and you don't have some resiliency and you're not mature enough to just see the long view, see... You know, if you don't have a vision of where you're going, and the pun intended, but if, if you know, I used to say to people when I was in the military, you know, in, in a capacity kind of like as a career counselor, I'd be like, where do you see yourself 10 years from now? I used to say that to customers, clients, when I practiced law who were starting a new company. They would, they'd be like, hey, I got this great idea. I want to start a company. Can you help me? I'd say, sure. Let's talk about where you see yourself because where you see yourself, where you want your company to be in 10 years, that would drive a lot of the decisions we made at the outset. Do I want to have a C Corp with several different classes of equity and debt that I can sell? Do I want to raise, do I want to raise money through private placements and avail myself of the capital markets? Or do I just want to have a, you know, privately held company and just, you know, not grow, not bring in investors? Those are all things that, that I had to think about for my client. Well, I'm encouraging you to say, hey, I'm going to roll with the punches here. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to anticipate things being bad or good. I'm just going to take them as they come. And, you know, you should find some enjoy, you should enjoy something about your day every day. That's part of being adaptable, too, is, is making the best out of a situation that maybe isn't great. You know, like the saying, when life hands you lemons, make lemonade. I mean, I also know some people that say, you know, when life hands you lemonades, make uh, like, I don't know, gin and lemonade. But, um, you know, if you're not, if, if you don't have that mindset, then, you know, of what's going to happen in TNT, and maybe just saying, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to go with it. Um, unless something's unsafe or you're not being trained or something, you know, you should just enjoy the ride. Do your work. Try to be as good as, at it as you can. Try to learn as much as you can. But don't, you know, talk to other drivers. Learn from other drivers. Um, I had a great trainer when I was at night. I, you know, I, I've always spoken highly of him because I thought he did a good job. But I've also learned a lot from other drivers that weren't my trainers. Um, and, you know, I've picked up things along the way, just maybe observation, maybe a little osmosis, maybe reading about something. And I've tried to become a better professional. And I think I'm even, you know, I'm trying to improve as a trainer. I think I've done a good job, but I want to be better. 
but I have to adapt, right? I have to, I have to work to the strengths of my trainees. Um, that doesn't always work, um, but you know, I gotta at least try and come up with a solution. So if, if, if you're thinking about doing this, maybe you're not on a TNT truck yet, um, or maybe you are, you know, maybe you need to look at, in, instead of worrying about, you know, oh, well, I don't think my trainer drives as many hours as I do, or I don't think, you know, you know, we're just running so hard, we never have a break. Well, when I was on my truck, one of trainer's truck, I was like, dude, you know, and I'll tell you exactly what he said to me. He said, you know, we're supposed to go out two weeks and then let you have home time. And my response to him was, you know what, man, it's your truck. Because he, he had told me up front, he goes, you know, normally I'm out four to five weeks. And I said to him after, but he said, you know, the two weeks thing. And I said, look, man, this is your truck. If you want to go out for five weeks, I'll be with you. You know, I, I'm committed to this job and learning this job. And if, and if that's not your attitude, then you probably, you, you know, you need to be honest with yourself. Because here's the other thing. If you're not willing to go out with your trainer where they're, where they're doing part of the work, you know, they're doing part of the driving. Like I drove 670 miles today. Um, and only, probably, I probably legit did 665. Okay. Um, so, you know, I'm definitely doing some of the work here. And if, if you know, being a, a part of a team and, and working together is, is not your thing, then maybe this isn't the job for you. Because you, you, even though, like, a lot of us crave the latitude we have, like, we kind of are captains of our own ship, right? You've heard people say that. You, you know, you're, you're a captain of your own ship, but you t still have to take navigation directions from shore, meaning from a fleet manager or from a shipper or from any number of people, right? There's all sorts of things. Like there's a detour on the highway. Well, you got to take the detour, right? You're not captain of your ship at that point, right? Because you, you don't have a choice. You get pulled over by DOT. You, you don't have the... Uh, you don't have the option to say, hey, dude, I'm not going to stay here and get inspected. You're not captain of your ship at that point. You have to recognize what it takes to have those periods of time where you are captain of your ship, where you can refuse a load, where you can take a different route because you want to. Um, you know, and that's, that's what you're working towards. But you're not captain of your ship until you're upgraded, until you're an AC. Um, and then even if you're a company driver, you're not a captain of your ship as much as, say, if you're a lease. Um, there are different sets of rules. And, you know, everybody kind of juggles that and decides what they want to do. But if you haven't thought through all that, if, if, if you haven't unburdened your mind um, and said, I'm going to go with the flow. I'm going to learn everything I can. I'm going to do my best to keep my chin up and to be cooperative and to just embrace the suck, right? Not everything's going to be fun. Embrace the suck. You know, there's a class at Bud's and they had this motto. I, I've always loved it. And, it's, and, you know, there were even times where I'd be out like running in the rain and sweats and I'm drenched and I'm muddy. And they, they had this saying, and I, want, I don't want to mess it up. But they, they basically said, um, if we didn't do it, then it didn't suck. Um, and, you know, sometimes you just got to embrace the suck to get where you want to be. Um, so that's my kind of spiel for today. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I've talked to my trainee about maybe uh, sharing some of her thoughts about being on the truck so far. I think she's close to 12,000 miles. Uh, we're running pretty hard. We, uh, we ran from Cali. On, we left Cali on Sunday, ran over to Kansas City, and we picked up a load. Um, where did we pick up? Oh, also in Missouri, and we're on our way to <clears throat> Stockton, California tomorrow night. So anyway, take care, be safe. You gotta watch the weather.
there's no time of the year that you can ignore the weather anymore. There, it's not a thing. It's not a thing. You got to pay attention to the weather. Not only where you are, but where you're going. We were going to Grand Island. You got to look out. You got to look ahead. You got to look downrange. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate everybody. I really appreciate all the subscribers. Appreciate the people I get to meet. Um, that's a cool part of this. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time on Tim Travels. Bye.